Light me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. When I was little, I <laughs> when I was little, I didn't have that typical childhood dream of becoming an astronaut. Instead, I wanted to become a singer, a poetess, a drummer. And when I was 10 years old, I took up playing the drums as a hobby. It immediately turned out to be my biggest passion at that time. I played in a few bands, and one of them was a rock band. We were four boys and one girl, the drummer. I remember the audience of our shows being always so shocked that I was a girl. But you know what? There are many stereotypes in this world. One of them is that drummers are usually considered to be boys or men. And another one is that astronauts are usually considered to be men as well. On the contrary, my dream that I've been following since 2018 and that I've turned into a goal is to become the first Bulgarian woman in space. <laughs> I know, some of you may laugh, others might ask me, why, why would a girl dream to go to space? Well, let me explain to you why. In 2018, I was 15. 15 is a fragile age in which teenagers go to parties, discover themselves, get to know the world, but for me, this age was perfect because I realized that I did not want to be mediocre, and I set my ultimate life goal. I knew exactly how much hard work I had to put in to get to the final destination, space. But how everything started? Exploring the unknown universe's desire, primary instinct, driving force, passed down from the Greeks through Galileo Galilei, Einstein, Neil deGrasse Tyson, this same spark ignited in me while I was at space camp in Izmir, Turkey, a place that follows NASA's methods for training and preparation of the next generation of astronauts, scientists, engineers, and pilots. All trainees have different missions in models of the International Space Station. They have a mission in the Space Shuttle Discovery. They're engaged in robotics, hydroponics, programming, rocketry, physical, body-demanding challenges, and also engineering challenges, STEM in general. I don't know why, but when I participated in this camp, I was devoted to it, even though that space was not my passion during this period of time. I wanted to try every simulator, write down the details of every lecture, and do as many experiments as possible. While we were there, we watched several movies provided by NASA, and one of them started with a quote, Imagine that this astronaut is you. At that moment, I just felt it. I knew what my mission in this world was, to explore and go beyond my limits. I was the only participant invited personally by Meriton Chair, co-director and founder of Space Camp Turkey, to come back as a coach after reaching legal age with no competition for the position. So. <laughs> I got back home, but in the meantime, I told my mother that I was going to the States because I really wanted to attend the American camp. She was like, ha, 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 no way. And I was like, okay, just watch me. Now my mother is in the audience. Well, mom, I'm here. <laughs> and I'm back from the States, and I'm going again in two weeks. <laughs> So, back to the story. I sat down, I opened my planner as usual, I write down my goals, and many, many questions appeared to my mind. First of all, how was I gonna make this dream come true? I didn't know anything about Bulgaria's space program. Did we actually have one? What are the requirements to become an astronaut? Would I fit those requirements? Am I healthy enough? Physical selection process, how can I become an outstanding candidate? 
finding out what was the story behind the flights of Georgi Ivanov and Alexander Alexandrov, looking for the answers to the questions that I had, searching for opportunities in Bulgaria and abroad, establishing connections with people that are competent in the field was a great beginning for me. Now, standing here, I am glad to share with you that I have graduated from the two NASA space camps in the world, the one in Turkey and the other one is located in Huntsville, Alabama, United States. <laughs> Thank you. So I took part in summer school research camp in astronomy and astrophysics, where we studied and observed different meteor showers. To be honest, I witnessed the most spectacular views of my life. And I'm talking about seeing over 500 meteors for two or three nights. After a total analysis of data and consultations with scientists, my team submitted a study to the International Meteor Organization, IMO. So after that, I participated twice in master classes in particle physics of CERN. CERN is a special laboratory located on the border between France and Switzerland. I competed in robotics, started gaining experience in scuba diving, skydiving, and I even had the privilege to be a member of a team that built a ground station for tracking satellites and receiving from them, or seeing signals from them. Okay, so thanks to the generosity of one man, I became acquainted with the management of a small, single aircraft. Prioritizing my goals drastically changed the circle of people I had around me. But I guess that was necessary for my development as individual. Because by focusing on my goals and my studies, I attracted the right people and the things that are best for me. It was very hard emotionally. Friends that I thought my friends made fun of me, my classmates made fun of me. I had to face opinions of people that thought I come from a wealthy family, while the reality was I didn't have anything. And without the help of a famous Bulgarian hip hop artist, I wouldn't be standing here right now. So I want to share his name 100 Kilos Stokiwa. <laughs> a very sincere moment that I had was a dinner with our first cosmonaut, Georgi Ivanov, and two Russian cosmonauts, Sergei Zelotin and Alexander Wozutkin, who actually graduated from Space Camp America like me. So that's a proof that all trainees from the camp are motivated and some of them become astronauts, engineers, scientists, and pilots. It was a very cold first day of December, but the atmosphere in the restaurant could not handle our laugh, their breathtaking stories, and the dreams that we had. That night was like a strong wave that hit me with motivation and made my goals meaningful. Meeting with Georgi Ivanov was like a basketball player meeting Michael Jordan, or a tennis player meeting Novak Djokovic, or a business person meeting Steve Jobs. So right now, I am pursuing a degree in engineering physics and doing all this crazy training so as to acquire qualities, knowledge, and experience that will shape me into the best candidate in the next selection of astronauts. Speaking about the selection process, it is very complicated. You need at least a master's degree, but I would recommend getting even a PhD since the environment is quite competitive. You need professional scuba diving certification, experience in operating an aircraft, language skills, mental health that has to be perfect, also perfect health. You need 20-20 vision, sanity, and many more. Imagine how hard it is for a woman to compete with strong men that are part of the military. I'm going to talk about the facts right now. 80% of the astronauts from the newest NASA class have a military background. Until 2020, 566 people have traveled to space and only 65 of them were women. Astronaut applications are growing at an alarming rate, and I'm talking about thousands of people applying for one of the 10 or 12 positions available. Last year, the European Space Agency reported receiving over 23,000 applications and 12,000 goals for NASA. And imagine, that's not my biggest problem. 
Unfortunately, when I started chasing this dream of mine, I came across many obstacles. Sadly, people think that it is pointless to invest in science and astronautics. We already have the cosmonauts, right? Why do we need another one? Well, first of all, it is an example of national esprit. It is a cause for pride. It is the future of humanity, and it must be the highest goal of a nation. If not metaphorically, then physically. Second, scientific experiments, research, observations are to make life here on Earth better. We need to get out of this bubble and think more broadly. One month ago, I had a phone call with our second cosmonaut, Alexandrov, and he explained to me that in the past, Bulgaria and the USSR had very friendly and partnership-oriented relations, but right now, that's just history. So here, I face my biggest problem. I am born and I live in Bulgaria. And don't get me wrong, Bulgaria is a wonderful country in many ways, but I don't have many opportunities here due to the fact that Bulgaria does not have a signed contract with the European Space Agency. And to be clear, there are 22 member countries. Guess what? Bulgaria is not one of them. And I know these are circumstances that might affect me in the future, but there are many Bulgarians out there who cannot qualify for higher work positions just because they come from a country that is, is not a full member, it's only an associate member, and these are people that are excellent in their job, but they just can't qualify for higher positions. So this prevents me from applying for internships and scholarships. And yes, I was mad about it. I wanted to find out who was responsible for this. I was determined to fight about my and our space future. And I could not think of a more brilliant idea than to talk to the president of the Republic of Bulgaria, Mr. Roman Radev. Houston, I had an enormous problem. Yeah. <laughs> It took me some time to realize that meeting with the president was not the easiest appointment to make. <laughs> yeah, so I decided to write a letter to him and I sent it to him. I received an answer, but it was from his secretary, so I could not be sure that this letter managed to reach him. This idea, I forgot about it. It was something somewhere in my mind. So months after, that happened. I heard that the president was coming to my town. Many people were going to the square to see him, greet him. The policemen, um, they were guarding. There were many patrols. So I decided to ask the police for assistance. Of course, it was very protective and busy, and they could not assist me. That's why I had to, came, to come up with my plan B. And I found who was the police chief, so I explained to him what was the situation. I, <laughs> I told him that I had a letter addressed to the president, and he suggested looking, looking for someone from his civil bodyguards. Uh, yeah, after, <laughs> after a long search, it was a success. Guess what? I was the first one to shake hands with him after the mayor of my hometown. Even in situations like this one, we should not give up. We have to find ways, build doors, and search for opportunities. For the past three years, I had to make the impossible possible. I had to be adaptive, insistent, and ambitious. And now I'd like to share some examples of this right now with you. So two years ago, I got accepted into a space academy, and I had 48 hours to find a big amount of money. So, of course, I was in panic, I was shocked, I was scared, I was worried, but I decided to go to school and explain to my teacher that I, I had something more important in her class. I was an excellent student, so that was not a problem. And she was very kind, very supportive, and I wrote over 50 letters to potential companies and sponsors, and by the end of the day, I succeeded in finding the money that I needed. Okay, now, <laughs> I came to the conclusion that I had to graduate high school with the highest possible grades. So I decided to change schools. 
I had to catch up with three years of Spanish, sit six equivalence exams, another three for changing my grade of subjects that I've studied in grade nine. And on top of it, I changed schools without my parents' permission, so I had to work hard in order to be a full scholarship recipient. At first, I thought that meeting with the president of Bulgaria was hard, but after that I met the Minister of Education, Dr. Solomon Passi. <laughs> okay. I, I was invited to a private meeting with Her Excellency's Excellency Hiro Mustafa. She's an American ambassador to Bulgaria. And believe it or not, this person here, he is the general director of the European Space Agency, and I even managed to meet him. I'm not afraid to be a girl because I'm a fighter. And I hope that wherever you go next, you will follow your dream. You will speak your truth. You will be vocal. You will share your story. And I promise to be with you, to be by your side. I promise that someday I will be proud to say I did it. I will try 50, even 100 times until I succeed. I will learn, I will learn Russian perfectly if I have to. Earlier, I mentioned the quote, imagine that this astronaut is you. Now, I want you to imagine that this journalist is you, this doctor is you, this business person is you, this lawyer is you. You're capable of doing everything as long as you believe it. Yes, I'm young and I still have time, but you're capable too. I'm going to co quote my favorite astronaut, Chris Hetfield. Every decision you make, from what you eat to what you do with your time tonight, turns you into who you are tomorrow and the day after that. So look who you want to be and start sculpting yourself into this person. Sofia, it's Commander Ivanova. Three, two, one, thank you. Thank you, Daria.